Hi everybody, welcome again to a ProBuilder 6 for Unity 6 tutorial. Here we'll be looking at how to do the basic shape creation in ProBuilder. So this is a lot simpler than before. Once you install ProBuilder, you'll have a couple extra tools next to the regular ones in your tools overlay. And as a quick reminder, uh, just for these tutorials, I am turning everything off except for tools and tool settings. So you might want to use the overlay menu to do that yourself if you'd like to. For me, the shortcut is the tilde key on the keyboard. You can also right click and go to overlay menu if you'd like to. Uh, okay, so anyway, starting out tools overlay here. At the very end, you're gonna have any kind of creation tools that are available. So whether from splines or ProBuilder or another tool set, and I'll start creating. So this one here says create cube. I'll start with that and I can just draw out a shape, nice and simple. And you can also just continue drawing. It'll work on other surfaces like this if you'd like to, or you can choose a different shape. So to do that, just click and hold on this. You can see it has that little bottom, uh, I guess it's sort of an arrow down on the bottom right, and that's gonna let you know uh, in the future it's a new item in, in Unity where this is a um, pickable tool, basically. So when I pick something else, like let's say an arch, now that's gonna switch to that type, and I can click and drag to bring that out. And if I click off the tool and then back on it, it activates it immediately to draw another one, or I can click and drag again to pick. So pretty standard if you're used to anything from Photoshop, Blender, etc. Uh, but due to Unity, so you might not have seen that yet. Uh, let's draw out this stair shape while I have it and go over some of the quick change options here. So once the object is drawn, you'll see there's a couple, um, not super visible, I'm sorry, um, icons or just little buttons you can hit here. The simplest ones are the squares, the little square buttons on all sides. And this lets you just change the, I guess you'd say just the volume size or the overall size of this thing that's being drawn in. And just as a reminder, when you're creating these shapes, to begin with, they are I guess what you call a, a parametric shape, if I'm getting that term right, where it's not, you know, you're not poly modeling it yet. It's just a basic thing. You have, you know, things like stair count and th such. Let's rotate the view around to see that stairway better. Um, so with it here in this basic mode, you can change something like step count. Uh, you could actually make it uh, rounded if you want to. So this is kind of the, the benefit of when it's in this basic parametric mode. You're not doing any specific like vertex face edge editing you can pretty simply build up some nice structures this way without having to get too fancy. Uh, let's see what else. So any, any shape you draw will have this, and then let's uh, go ahead and actually do, 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 you know what, I'm gonna turn off the circumference so we can, oops, set that to zero, I meant to say. Maybe that could be a check mark, might be a little easier in the future. Uh, anyway, so we're here. Slim this down, and let's talk about also the arrows here. So these are used to rotate the shape within the volume. So it's a little tough to see, and when you use it, it'll make more sense. But this is either rotating to the right or to the left, or up and down if you're creating, I don't know, some sort of, uh, oops, that's just not working. Well, looks like we've discovered a bug. Uh, maybe it has something to do with what I've done here. Uh, anyway, what it ought to do, let's delete that stairway. These are, semi unofficial tutorial so there's going to be a few oddities there we go so what it ought to do is keep rotating it make some mc escher staircases or something if you want to not sure why that didn't happen before uh okay so uh if you experience that submit a bug <laughs> otherwise i will also of course anyway so you can use those to rotate your objects around works for anything you can use the buttons uh, sorry the little dots on the corners to do that as well and then you have the options here. So if I select different object, let's just actually, um, so I'll click the move tool, or you could hit escape on the keyboard to get back to a, a standard tool. All of these here are the standards, by the way. So that's something I should quickly demonstrate here. If I'm in a tool like this, so a creation tool, or even in some sort of editing context, you can always hit escape on the keyboard, and it'll pop you back to the last used, you can think of as just very normal standard tool. So moving and rotating stuff. So I'll do that, I'll select this object here, and let's say I want to change some of those values again. You can see on the far right, it shows edit shape, and this is going to somewhat confusingly, I'm learning a lot more about this as I do the tutorials, 
should have done it earlier. Uh, somewhat confusingly give you the ability to edit the shape without actually changing uh, or doing real vertex. So again, like just as a quick example, we're not going to talk about it in this one, but if I wanted to, you know, grab vertices and move them around and stuff like that, that's a totally different thing versus using the edit shape tool. So again, here, just like the stairway, I've got a couple options. I can give it more sides there, give it maybe a different circumference. I don't like that. I'll just turn it off. Uh, more thickness here, something like that. And the same, use these little buttons or dot handles, whatever you might call them, to rotate and move and such this item around. So pretty straightforward. Uh, when you're using this tool after having drawn it, you can also change the type. So this is a little more advanced. No, not really, but uh, it's something that, well, the use of it might be if you draw something like this arch and then realize, actually, I wish for whatever reason, this was uh, maybe just a door shape. I can change the type and now it's that, but it keeps the same volume. So in case you had that size set up just right, snapped everything, you can change it. And then you'll have you know different options here for the door. Of course, the, do the options can't transfer over. And if you swap back to what it was before, let's say it was an arch, you're gonna lose those settings. That's something we could probably keep. So I'll think about maybe we can, uh, we can change that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for basic creation. And we can talk a little bit more about, let's see what else there might be here. Um, oh, poly shape. We totally forgot poly shape. So I will actually just delete all this stuff real quick, get it out of the way. So poly shape is the second button over here on the end. And when you click that, it enters a different mode of creation where you're just clicking to place basically a 2D shape or whatever type you want. So it's good for landscape chunks or anything a little more organic. When you click back on the final point, you'll see it fills it in. And then as you move it up and down, you can kind of see down here in the corner, it's telling you exactly how high you're creating it. And there you have it. Once you click the, the last time, it'll kind of complete it. And then you can continue drawing more if you like, or just again, hit the escape key and you're back to the regular, uh, whatever the last standard tool you had was, and you can work with that object. So a poly shape can be edited, as I mentioned before, using, you know, good old, the full on editing tools if you want, not part of this video, we'll go into the in a different one, or you can then just escape out of this and use over here you have, that should show the text, I'm putting a lot of fun things here. Um, you have just like the, sorry, let me draw one in here. Uh, let's just uh, draw it right on top. Uh, so if you have a regular cube, right, you can edit it and again, or any kind of shape like that. And you can do the same thing here with a poly shape. So when I turn that on, now I can edit its points. So click and drag on those. If you click on one, it becomes selected and you can hit the backspace key to remove that point. And you can add new points by hovering on the line. You'll see where that green dot appears and click and drag to move that around. Also, once you're in this edit mode here, this type of editing, you can see the exact extrusion height or the height of it. So you can move that up and down. It can be negative if you want. And as a really useful option, if you're making like an interior space or something like that, usually turn on flip normals and that will just basically make it right away into a nice little interior space. Great for FPS levels or a cave or something like that. So uh, that's pretty useful. And let's see, that's pretty much it for items there. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Again, you can tell the unofficial nature of these tutorials, but I just really wanted to get them out ASAP until the official ones come out. So, okay, cool. So that's poly shape, regular shapes. Again, both of these can be edited like anything else. It'll keep their settings and you can go crazy. Check out the other tutorials where we'll go into full poly editing for those. Okay, that's it. Thanks for taking a look. Um, I'm pretty sure that's everything for basic creation. Um, yeah, let me know if you think there's anything I missed and I'll be happy to create extra tutorials. Okay, thanks a bunch. See you in the next ones.